video. We got a call one day that we never expected and it scared the ever loving beep out of us. <laughs> that is a call that you never ever want to get. It was a call that we got from our lender. A lender that we had on a project. We had six more months to go before the loan was due. But guess what they said? We're letting you know we're calling the loan due. You have seven days to repay the entire thing. Yeah, my jaw hit the floor. So it was in one of the markets where we were doing probably 12 flips all at once. And then we had all these other single family homes that you were flipping. And our strategy back then was to flip so that we had profits for buy and hold. And it was a cool strategy, right? So we're in the middle of rehabbing all these projects, right? We have this amazing, perfect strategy blend to just build our multifamily real estate, but creating the money, like Jen said. But what we found was the market that we were doing all these rehabs in started getting hotter and hotter and harder. We were like, yes, right? ARVs are climbing. But the challenge that we faced that we didn't anticipate at the time was we started having a shortage of labor supplies. So our contractor that we had hired to do all these projects, we had multiple ones that had already be done, been done successfully. All of a sudden he was having a hard time finding people to basically do the work. I still remember the day getting the phone call from him saying, hey man, my guys aren't here. Yeah. And having all these, these single family homes that we were supposed to flip and um, trying to dive into to why. And, and that was why it was starting to get oversaturated with investors and now all of the labor force was going to other projects. And so our GC is like, hey, how am I supposed to finish these? So we had to sit down and look at, okay, well, we're not getting rid of the multifamilies, the ones that we've rehabbed, because those are, that's, at this point, are cash flowing. Right. So great. So we had a bunch of flips that were going somewhere ready for markets. So we're getting those on the market. So we had to look at the ones that we have left and say, can we finish these in time based on what our current loans are. So we made the decision that two of the houses that we're rehabbing, we're like, you know what? We're not gonna finish these in time. If he can't get guys to the, to the job site, we're, we gotta do what we gotta do. And it sucked because we had all this profit lined up. We were like, we're gonna make this much money. We can roll it into the next project. We can buy more multifamily, cash flow, yeah. All the things. All the things, we were like, yes. And all of a sudden, we were like, shoot, you know, it's, it's not gonna happen and we don't wanna have a problem with the lender, so what we decided to do was just... List them. Yeah, just list them as is. So they were partially renovated, some of the work was done, but most of it wasn't yet. And we were like, you know what, it's the best thing to do. We can get the lender paid back, we'll focus all of our time and energy on the ones that we could finish. Right, so, and there's plenty of investors that were coming into the market that would totally. wanna pick them up, right? So cool. Let's do that. Let's let's list them and, and get those investors started. So here's the problem with when you list a property that you've got the lender on saying, I'm going to do this rehab. It kind of changes the scope of work. Let's just flash back to that phone call when they called and they said, hey, the note is due. You got seven days to pay it. We were standing there flabbergasted, jaw on the ground, stern spaghetti asking what? I'm sorry. We've made all the payments. I don't understand what the problem is. And they said, well, you changed the scope of work. What the hell are you talking about? What do you mean? Like we're trying to, we're trying to sell it so we can get good with you. Mm -hmm. uh, can't we just list it and continue to go down that path? And he said, yeah, you, sure. If you could do it in seven days, or if you get a buyer and you close and you show us that you have proof of the buyer and get the, the closing going, then, then yes, we'll, we'll, we'll pause. But if you don't, we're putting you into foreclosure. Like who does that? A bully. That's total, a total bully. Oh wait, a bank, a hard money lender, people in it to get the money, yeah. but yet he wasn't going to get any money. So we're like, what do you, we're trying to sell this. Right? So, so when they did that and we listed it and he said those key words, we were like, well, we have seven days or we could find a buyer. I think we were awake until three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> helping a buyer put an offer on it. And then we submitted that to the lender. That's our buy more time strategy, right? So after we were able to do that and prove that we had a buyer, um, they gave us a little bit of time. They said, okay, you got 30 days to close it. So that gave us a little bit of wiggle room and we had to assess what are we going to do? Because we had a whole bunch of other properties that we had loans on and we had to figure it out. And plus, not to mention, we had other things we were refinancing. So we really stood to lose everything and, and not have the credit because of the foreclosure yes. to rebuild it. So we were kind of crapping our pants. Big time. All right. So if you're liking this video so far, hit that like button. You're the one who got that first call. What that felt like to get that call? It's, it's really weird because right when you asked, uh, my whole body tightened. Um, I have PTSD for sure. So um, at the time, the kids were little. They were, they were younger. And they're running around and I'm trying to make spaghetti for dinner, right? I could, so I could smell the spaghetti right now. I'm stirring it. I, I remember feeling sick to my stomach, like nausea hit me. 
we had private money lenders that were partners with us and I immediately was like, well, I got to protect their money. And then when I started connecting all of the dots on just how much of a snowball effect it was, I literally threw up. So yeah, and then I called you. <laughs> <laughs> I get to experience all the same things too. All it feels like is a giant like black sheet that's just been draped over you. It's hard to even see the light at the end of the tunnel. We had no idea at that moment in time when our emotions are like here and we're like, what in the hell? We're moms, we got all these little kids that we support and man, it, it was rough. And I know that we're not the only ones who've been through stuff like this. And sometimes it's not even real estate, right? It's yeah. something in life and something yeah. in business. Like, have you been through something like that before when you got news that just like it just hit you. threw you on your back and you were like, I can't even think. I'm just curious. If so, put it in the comments below because we want to know like, are we alone in this? Are we the only ones who've ever been through something like this? Right. Sure we have it. There we are. Right? We, we don't have the capital to, to get ourselves out of this situation because everything's literally in play. We're managing how many rehabs? I mean, it was 12 at one point. It was a lot of rehab going <laughs> on to the point where we were able to take free vacations because of all the points that we used to rehab the properties. <laughs> True. Um, but they're maxed out, right? So now we're like maxed out on credit cards. We're low on capital. And now we're looking at, well, we got to look at our other retirement funds and possibly sell stocks in order to figure out how to sell these other properties that we listed at a loss. Yeah but we're not in the business of stepping over a quarter to pick up a dime. So I was like, if I have to cash that out and be able to bring, I think it was $26,000 to closing. I had to bring $26,000 to closing on a house that I intended to make a profit on. It was painful, but I did it because I could either do the 26,000 to close it and get out of this, or I risked losing everything. And uh, that's never an option. So that's what we did. I started making and cashing in all of our other retirement funds so that as soon as the property would close, we would be able to come to the table, close it and move on. But then I had an idea. I wonder if we could get like a wraparound portfolio loan so that we could refinance and pay off the hard money lenders that are over here. And what, before any foreclosure happens and ruins our chances and credits of qualifying for said portfolio loan, right? Here's what we ended up doing as a solution. And it came from Jen just one day saying, hey, is this even possible? So we had four duplexes, right? None of those duplexes were very high value. It was a market where property values weren't that high, but they were cash flow monsters. But they 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 totally cash flow. They cash flowed so high. But just being able to wrap just those into a portfolio wouldn't work because the values weren't high enough for us to be able to do like a 70% yep. refinance. Like we just it wouldn't work. So Jen's like, "Well, what if we took two of our single family homes that we already renovated?" That where we we weren't done renovating, but we were renovating to sell them. And she's like, what if instead we finish the renovations? They're gonna have a very high value. They probably aren't gonna cash flow that well by themselves. But if we put them all together, maybe it would create kind of like this this balanced thing. And so I was like, oh, this sounds like a spreadsheet opportunity. So I <laughs> broke out my spreadsheets and my debits and credits. I was so excited. And sure enough, like adding those single family homes with the duplexes, the high value of the single family homes connected with the high uh, cash flow of the the duplexes it made this perfect blend and we found a lender who was mm -hmm. able to put it all together in one loan and we were able to basically take all the properties that we could keep that were the closest to being done and basically wrapped it up in a portfolio loan it was yeah. the most insane month of pulling documents together. Here's the best part. This is how my brain thinks it's a little, we, we literally probably have a whole brain between the two of us. And because there were several opportunities, like there were, yes. there were many properties. So yeah. we had option A, B, and C. And I was like, well, okay, what if we did the four duplexes and these single family homes? Okay, right. what about the four duplexes and these single? And so we figured out and analyzed each option and what that would do. And we had to do that very quickly. But looking at three different options, and then we just, we tried to pull the trigger on A, it didn't mm. work. We tried to pull the trigger on option B, that didn't work, but we pulled the trigger on option C and it did work. And I'm telling you, we got this lender to do this wraparound loan and we closed on that thing two days before the other hard money lender was going to put it into foreclosure. So, which would have killed our opportunity. We wouldn't be finance. talking to you right now. <laughs> we'd be like, <laughs> we'd be like laying down, oh, rocking ourselves. We're just still like, in pain. Yeah. <laughs> so like the moral of the story on that one, what, what we learned is that having contingencies is huge, right? And being able to analyze all the different options. So you're doing it from a place of being empowered versus feeling like this is just happening to you. So that's literally how we got through that. It was, it, was, it literally 48 hours would have made a difference life path for us, right? So the, the whole thing is 
if, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. That's, that's what I've learned. So going in and looking at that, looking at all of the options and seeing, can we hold it? That's something that we just proactively do now for the past few years, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're not making that mistake ever again, <laughs> and we don't want you to make it either. We came across someone that's awesome. His name is Justin Wagner, and uh, he has a Backbone Swag t-shirt company, and we had to wear these shirts today because it's like all about burying the excuses. The mindset is like, this, this is my favorite, right? Like, bet against me. That'll be fun. <laughs> this is the best. This is probably the reason why it says don't F and quit, right? And I have this water bottle and I've got it labeled and stickered up because for that to always remind me, it takes me back to that, that problem, that yeah. challenge and how we just literally did not stop because everything was on the line, right? And if you think about it, it's just kind of like everything on the line all the time and you just it have is. a plan and shift, adjust and, and make informed decisions, you'll get through it. But it all starts right here. So we wore these shirts for this episode for Justin and we wanna just thank you, keep in mindset out there for everybody. If you've been wanting to get started in multifamily investing, but you're just not sure what to do first, second or third, you can click the link in the description below and a member of our team will reach out and figure out like, what are your goals? How can we help you get there? So click that link in that description. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you comment down below. What kind of videos do you wanna see? What do you wanna learn? Because look, we're here to make content for you. And I don't know if you know, but we have a free Facebook group called Multifamily Real Estate Investing. So if this is an area that you're looking to grow in, come and join us. Every week we do a weekly Q&A so you can ask any question about real estate. We'd love to have you there. And if you want to learn more about how to rehab multifamily properties, then check out our course right there on how to manage contractors and rehabs. And we'll see you guys next week.